Hey gang, this is Rob from ITMasterKey.com and today we're going to go over 10 of the networking protocols that you need to know. You can please do me a quick favor and like the video and subscribe. I can continue to make videos just like this one. So simply put, protocols are simply the rules and regulations that govern different services. Now there's a thousand different protocols and each one of those protocols are assigned a logical port number. Good news is for the exams and in real life, there's only a few that you really need to know. So this is not an all-inclusive list. There's thousands of protocols, thousands of port numbers, but these are a few of the protocols and port numbers that you should know at a minimum. So let's go ahead and get into the list. These protocols and port numbers aren't in any order of importance. So number 10 is gonna be port 80 and port 443, HTTP and HTTPS. Pretty much no networking list would be complete without these two. These two are the foundation of any website that you're going to be going to. So HTTP sends all the information in plain text. While HTTPS, the S stands for secure. HTTPS is way more secure than HTTP and most sites actually use HTTPS by default nowadays. If you want to double check or triple check, all you have to do is take a quick glance over at the URL and see that HTTPS is in front of the URL of the website that you're on or that there's a small little lock in front of the website. Oh, and HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. I don't want to forget that. Then HTTP is just a secure version of that protocol. So number nine is DNS, the Domain Name Server. So port 53 is responsible for resolving website names to IP addresses. So what I mean by that is, it's a lot easier to remember itmasterkey.com as opposed to the IP address that's attached to itmasterkey.com. So the DNS server pretty much does all the heavy lifting for you. So you type in itmasterkey.com and the DNS server actually sees, okay, what IP address is associated with that website name. And once it figures out the IP address is associated with itmasterkey.com, bam, you get to go to the website. And a quick class, if you don't know what an IP address is, an IP address is simply your address on the network. Just like the mailman needs to know the address of your house to make sure that the mail goes to the right place. Every device on the network has an IP address so the network knows where to send everything. So RDP or the Remote Desktop Protocol uses port 3389 and it's gonna help you a lot when you become an IT pro. It's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. So with the Remote Desktop Protocol, you can actually remote into someone's device. You don't have to physically go there, you don't have to get in the car, you don't have to drive. All you have to do is remote into their actual device. So you'll set up a remote connection and remote just meaning that you're not physically located where the device is and then you will help them with whatever their issue is. So port 3389, you can remote into whatever the device is, you can upgrade it, you can troubleshoot it, you can do what you need to do without physically being there with the actual device. So port 3389, you're going to be using it a lot. Like I said, once you become Mark Zuckerberg's right hand man or woman, so it's going to give you a lot uh, more free time and it's going to allow you to stay wherever you are but still fix issues for your customers. So number seven is another remote service called Secure Shell. It uses port 22 and allows you to remote into servers and into hosts and all the information sent to that host and all the information received from that host or server is encrypted. So another quick class, encryption just means that it's sent in a way that if somebody's trying to snoop on you, if somebody's trying to see what you're sending, they shouldn't be able to read that information, right? So pretty much it's jibber jabber, gibberish, right? Jibber jabber, gibberish, is that even, yeah, whatever. Uh, so pretty much it's sending away, sending a language that you wouldn't understand, right? So for example, let's say that I want to encrypt a message. I know that you don't know Chinese, so I write a message to someone else in Chinese. So I send it from myself, to the person I want to send it to, even if you see it, it doesn't matter because you can't decrypt it. You can't translate it. You don't know what it means. Hopefully that makes sense. So number 22 is Secure Shell and it's number seven on our list. Number six is FTP. It uses ports 20 and 21. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. And just like the name states, it transfers files across the network. So the reason it uses two ports is because port 20 is responsible for transferring, transmitting, and forwarding data across the network. 
while port 21 is used for flow control of that data. So speaking of flow control, if you want to get in the flow of getting IT certifications, head over to itmasterkey.com and enroll inside of a course. Number five is Telnet, port 23. Just like some of the other protocols we talked about, it actually allows you to remote into different hosts and different servers. You actually can use a virtual terminal to log into these different hosts and these different servers. One downside to Telnet is that all the information that's stored and transmitted is actually transmitted in plain text. Now let's talk about a few email protocols. The SMTP protocol is the fourth protocol we're gonna talk about and it uses port 25. SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. So this protocol is responsible for transmitting email securely from network to network. One downside to SMTP is that you cannot download the emails directly using SMTP. You can download emails with the assistance of another protocol that we're going to talk about in a bit. The next email protocol we're going to talk about is the third on the list, and it's the IMAP protocol and uses port 143. IMAP stands for Internet Message Access Protocol. So with the IMAP protocol, you don't have to download emails at all. Wherever you are, as long as you have internet access, you will have access to those emails. Now, you can download the emails at any time, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And all of these emails are kept secure. So the next email protocol we're going to talk about is what actually allows you to download emails from an SMTP server. And the protocol we're talking about is POP3, and it uses port 110. So POP stands for Post Office Protocol. So with the post office protocol, you can download emails from email servers. Only thing is, once you download those emails from the server, the email is deleted from the actual server. And only part of the email that you have is the one that you downloaded. So you can make a POP3 secure, because inherently it's not secure, by using something such as TLS, which is transport layer secure. All right, gang, so drum roll, the number one protocol on this list, not in general, is gonna be the DHCP protocol, and it uses port 67 and 68. And as a network engineer, as a network analyst, as a help desk, as a person that's in tech in general, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So DHCP, simply put, automatically assigns IP addresses to every device that's on your network. So instead of you having to do it manually, the DHCP server sees a new device on the network and it actually assigns an IP address to that device. So why does it have two ports? Use a 67 to pretty much acknowledge the request from whatever device, like, hey man, I need an IP address. And then 68 actually sends out or assigns that IP address to that device. All right, gang, so today we went over 10 networking protocols that you should know. Do me a favor, drop in the comments one protocol, one port number, tell me what it does and why you think it's important. Other than that, make sure you like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in class.